We're now in Hancock Park, which is like a pretty ritzy, posh, nice neighborhood. This used to be like a lot of the old silent movie stars used to live here, and including one named Lois Weber, who, when she moved out of this house we're about to see at 401 South Mirfield, Nat King Cole bought it. Now, the big deal about this was that Nat King Cole was the first African American to live in this neighborhood, and he was buying this house for what is reported between $65,000, $75,000, and $85,000. Now this property, the last time it sold, was five and a half million. But the story goes that when he moved in, um, or when he was looking at buying this, the homeowners association actually offered him $25,000 to think again and not move here, um, and, which he declined. He bought the house, and while he was moving in, some of the neighbors came up and told him that they didn't want undesirables in their neighborhood. And he responded by saying, well, if I see any, I'll let you know. Um, so the interesting thing also about this house is that in 1949, the government uh, seized it from him because they said he owed $149,000 in back taxes, which he very quickly paid uh, and reclaimed the house. Um, Natalie Cole in her lifetime talked many times about how big of a deal Christmas were at this home and uh, and that when she would drive by it she would always like get very wistful about it and always wishes she could go in and actually said that ever since the house was sold that it's been nothing but African-American families who have bought it so let's get a little view of the Nat King Cole home oh uh, one other thing I wanted to mention was that while he lived here um, the KKK was still around and they burned a cross in his front yard when he first moved. The house is pretty heavily uh, guarded by foliage, but I want to at least give you like a little bit of a look at it. Apparently it has a swimming pool and a tennis court and it's a big, what I would consider very gigantic corner home. So. Yep, here's Nat King Cole's home while he was alive, of course. I'm trying to block out the sun a little bit for you. Pretty big place. And this is obviously the yard where he would have had a cross burned. Pretty sick world. And this would have been Nat King Cole's front walk. If you were a guest of his, you would have walked up this right into the front. I'm actually going to take a little walk off to the side here as well and just give you maybe a little bit of a side view because it is, like I said, a very big property. That would have been the entryway right there. And that's. The home that you have to imagine the Christmas song was sang live in person many years, many, many years. Now I'm guessing that they've had a lot of people like me out here doing this because they have um, cameras and everything everywhere. So we'll, we'll pretty much call it an end of this one. But that's Nat King Cole's home. Legends. And this, I would assume, would be Nat King Cole's driveway and garage. He would have driven his car in every night. When I got home, I found this photo of Nat in front of the house, and it looks like there used to be a driveway going up through what is now the grass, and they've created that little walkway since then, and now put a driveway in the back.